Welcome once again to Obina Show Live. Thank you very much for taking time off your busy schedule so you can tune in. Thank you very much for buying your own bundle so you can get to stream us live. We really appreciate that. We don't take that for granted. That's why we ensure that we'll keep bringing for you quality, entertainment, and education. That's edutainment. And also on this platform, we aim to motivate, inspire. Sometimes we have intriguing conversations. Like the one for today is going to be a mixture of a little bit of both. There's some intriguing conversations you're about to have. Yes, about magonjwa. Yeah, sicknesses, patients. Mambo inafanyikanga kwenye hospitali. Kuna Okay. Then also, I also want to find out why doctors and writing. Zawazi someki. Wanafundishwa ngwa hiyo kwa the school of doctrism. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to find that out as well. However, the story of the gentleman that I'm hosting today is quite inspirational. Yeah, from Kisi. Wa Kisi? Kaki, kaki, kaki. Akakuja mbaka bungoma na nafanya kazi nzuri sana. So ni memtafuta tukai chini kidogo. So wale wakazi wa bungoma and the environs. You can know where you'll be taking your people. Na wanalindua vizuri sana. I'm also in the one and only doctor Ombonye. Ni aje doc? Uh, poa. Uko viti? Niko sawa. Leo no unafanya consultation. <laughs> <laughs> Today is the other way around. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so how may we be available? <laughs> Lakini uko sawa? I'm good. I've went around your hospital. It's amazing. And I'll, I'll, I have a few questions that I will ask you about that. But before we get there, to figure out how to get to know, how to get to know, how to get to know, how to get to know. As it will be, yeah. being a doctor is a calling. And okay. for me, it was truly one. Uh, I had my elder cousin that I was always looking up to. Okay. Uh, Dr. Victor Mbeka, who was a doctor, by the time I grew up to just get to know and I loved the kind of work he used to do and uh, that motivated me because I could uh, see greater great impact to the community around to the patients by sorting out most of the conditions those ones who are seeming to be very unwell could get better as he attended to them uh, even by just having a, a, a talk to him and uh, later of course uh, the, the, the good things of life you will be able to see him uh, also attain the same so that motivated me by the time I was in uh, class 3 that I badly wanted to be a doctor and become like Dr. Mbeka. <laughs> yeah even me I wanted to be a doctor. Siata njimu litake kwa I wanted to be a doctor, then I wanted to be a pilot, then I wanted to be an engineer. <laughs> Nowadays, I'm just a patient. <laughs> I didn't know that people take it that seriously, that you had to really be a doctor as a child, then you pursue it all the way to adulthood, but it's fine. So that story you said about the calling, that thing is true. And being a doctor is a calling. Yeah, the calling is uh, true because it's also not easy to be a doctor sometimes. People will think that a doctor enjoys it all, but then the sacrifices that doctors and generally healthcare personnel give uh, to get out of their comfort zone is underrated, I would say. Uh, because a doctor will attend to emergencies at any time. Uh, there could be uh, patients who have trauma, probably okay. mothers in labor who require an operation. Okay. If you are a gynecologist, you will wake up at 2 a.m. Uh, you will have to leave your sleep, uh, something that cannot just come with anyone. So you must have passion for that job, among other things, because by bringing life to somebody who was probably losing life, you must be patient uh, with those, uh, I mean, basically patients, because some will require you to go an extra mile, uh, we, sometimes we also have psychiatric patients who uh, may be difficult to handle. They may even uh, assault you. So sometimes you must have that heart of uh, passion, the heart to care, so that you are able to achieve the best for your patient. So it's a calling, and it's truly one. Oh, my pigwa ngumi na mgonjwa. Karibu ni pigwa ngumi. This is the same space. It will be a two. It is the same karibu. Okay, lipitia wapi hapa mapa. So of course you must know how to navigate around your patients. Try to make them as friendly as possible, uh, because all that is a training that we get. 
by the time we are doctors, you go to Badare as mm. part of a rotation in uh, uh, the doctorate uh, training mm. so that you are able to have an experience of all the kind of patients that you are likely to meet. Oh, wow. Mm. Now, coffee? Coffee, yo, that's a story for another day. Nasema coffee ya kukunywa. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Oh. <laughs> ah, yeah. Another question that I always want to find out. Yeah. Uh, it's difficult. I actually see my wife is also a doctor. So she treats me because sometimes uh-huh. it becomes difficult to treat yourself. Yes, yeah, so I have a personal doctor. And luckily she's in the show, Dr. Sylvia Mbonye. Yeah. Pia we akikuwa mgonye pia unamtibu. Yeah, depending on what exactly. If we need a gynecologist, we escalate because we do not want to <laughs> <laughs> take matters in our own. Yeah. <laughs> you escalate. If you have a wagaina. Yeah. Uh, nini, <laughs> ukimtibu ama kutibu, nani analipa nani? Uh, malipo, t- <laughs> sasa siyo pesa. Iyo <laughs> tunongea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Lakini this is before even your wife. Yeah. No, Kama it, daktari? it is not possible. Ah, uh, it is not possible to do that. <laughs> you <laughs> just allow others to to treat you. But luckily doctors don't often get sick, so oh. uh, Dr. Silvia Omay Jidunga Shindano. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm always curious. I'm always thinking, my dog wanafanyanga. Like, msa mefika uko na, uko, eh, akaka fever kidogo nini. The way, sir, ask yourself, medicate with the antibiotics. Pio na juu, I injection. We discourage that. So, because we know that if you do that, then, of course, you are bound to get resistance. So, you just see a doctor carry a few lab works. Yeah. If uh, it necessitates that you take antibiotics, and then that will be guided by the uh, laboratory findings or another kind of investigation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Ah, yeah. Final question out of curiosity. I love Sunny answer some number serious. Kuna handwriting poor? My handwriting is good. Lieutenant <laughs> Kalamu, who has a pen and a paper? Hey, yeah. pen, you here. Karatasi ko api. <laughs> we have to confirm. Ndike prescription. Ndike mm. apu amokzil. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Why do doctors write like that? Mm. It's the same thing. It's not easy to say that will be uh, on a person or not because all the doctors I know actually have a good handwriting because ah. there is no hurry to write and uh, writing is basically communication. So the doctors that I have around here no one has a bad handwriting. But Dr. Gen Z. You only need a job. So we used to be told that when they even do something, they could not read it. And all in all, even if they wrote something that as a lay person you are not able to see, uh, the personnel in the hospital are able to follow because we clearly, uh, that's also a language. Apart from writing, you know, medicine itself, the medical language is unique in its own way. We can have a discussion and you'll have no understanding at all. Now we oh. have to come back and explain to you in a layman's perspective so that you're able to, to understand. So, you are a Yeah. And the uncle even said, oh, so far, it's extinct. I mean, you go, huh? We all righty. Ah, yeah. Let's talk about your school days. Will you me happy? Mm. Your medicine? Oh, medicine. I was in uh, Kenyatta University. Oh. Yeah, for, for six years. Yeah. The other period uh, in high school and primary school. In high school, I joined St. John's Nyamagwa Boys High School in Kisi. And I, I was in uh, Golden Academy for my uh, primary school. Okay. Yeah. Attachment ya kwanza ya udaktari? Uh, we call it internship. Internship was in uh, Machakos level 5. Okay. Yeah, that is where I, I, I got my internship from the year 2016 uh, to 2017. Any interesting escapade that happened there? 
Yeah, most of uh, the, the most unique case that I can remember was uh, a maternity case that I was very passionate about. And, uh, you know, maternity and pediatric cases, uh, if you ask most doctors, those are intriguing cases that will make us go out of our way to assist, especially because they, uh, this particular cohort look vulnerable. And uh, if you cannot assist them, then you can easily lose them. And uh, the regrets cannot be something that you learn to experience. So for this particular patient uh, who had uh, presented by herself to hospital, she was due for delivery. Unfortunately, uh, later on, she developed uh, what we call as antipartum hemorrhage and she bled and uh, the, the, the blood that was lost was quite significant. Of course, when somebody loses blood, you need to make quick arrangements, uh, replace the lost blood. And for some cases which require you to seek to go to surgery for a cesarean section, then uh, you are deemed to do so. So for that particular reason, uh, we organized everything, prepared the mother for a cesarean section, uh, uh, sought for blood, gave her blood and uh, ensured that there was also blood after surgery because we can also lose more during the surgery. And then uh, it was a bit complicated, but we appreciate that that was uh, a successful surgery. The mother was so grateful that she decided to call her son after me. So she gave me the choice to actually, I thought it was a joke, but I, I had to give one of the names as my name. And that is a, that's a Kamba child. So of course the Kamba name is uh, Mtune. I remember the, the boy's name. So we call him Jeff Carson Mtune. Yes, yeah, so that is one unique case that I remember that also gave me a motivation afterwards to ensure that uh, the care that our patients will get could be passionate. You could go out of your way to ensure that people have that positive impact okay. and uh, they will also live to remember you. So now there's a Kamba boy, somewhere in Ukambani, called Ombonye. <laughs> <laughs> For whatever reason, <laughs> he's being bullied by the friends. <laughs> I'll be a foot of a No, it was an English name. So I decided not to give oh, the Kamba name. Oh, you yeah. idea. Ombonye, <laughs> imagine. I'm going to What Ombonye, My fans, why are you not naming your children after me? Obina is not a beautiful name. Hmm? I'm here to see a child named Obina. What do you guys want me to do? Hmm? Oh, God, it's up. You know. <laughs> All right. Any other interesting case for Kutibu? Either child, grown up? Yeah, later on, again, we had another interesting case that we actually were so happy alongside with my team. Uh, uh, this was particularly a, a child, again, around 10 years, who was very sick, and that was during the doctor's strike. And uh, we received this child uh, in Hopkins, and uh, the grandmother just was dropped by a motorbike at the, at the parking area, and she was already mm. wailing. She was crying and uh, holding this child helplessly. Yes holding the child helplessly and uh, crying actually, thinking that the child was already dead. So our soldiers have already been trained to handle emergency cases by helping transit very quickly to the emergency area. And luckily I was around the casualty area. So when we received that, we activated our code blue, which is an emergency call to inform all the healthcare workers, the nurses, the laboratory guy, more doctors, ICU team that we have an emergency and they all assemble quickly. If you had another stable patient, so you rush, you excuse yourself and they all came to the attention for that young boy. So he was convulsing, very uh, febrile or feverish and that was in the heat of the doctor strike when uh, most government facilities could not uh, attend to patients. So when we received this child, the grandmother was still wailing. Of course, we tried to control her 
uh, first attended to the emergency very quickly, stabilized the child, but then realized that this child probably required more care, which could uh, necessitate eye dependence unit or even uh, ICU because of uh, the convulsions and the uh, injury that they had caused. So after ensuring that the child was in a, a fairly a good uh, st uh, position, uh, the only person who was around was just the grandmother who was looking helpless when we tried to ask whether she had a phone so that we could call the mother and father who had apparently gone for a kibarua. She didn't even have a phone, but then she could only give us a, a phone number. So we called to inform them, and they were very far away to a point that they were even saying they are looking for fear to come. So that was the kind of situation that we were dealing with. So we were worried because now, you know, that is an expensive case to deal with because we may require ICU, and uh, somehow the care that will be required will be specialized care, and therefore... Uh, looking at these circumstances, we cannot refer this child to an government facility, which was not operational at that point. So it was up to us to either give hope to this family, bring back this child to life, or give up with them and allow the child to die. So because of the uh, humanity that we always have, we took up the case again. Uh, as we waited for the parents to come and probably see whether there is anything we could do, we admitted the child in a high dependence unit, put the child on oxygen, put him on uh, serious medications, and uh, we were so happy to see the child respond by day two. But now the parents could not be seen anywhere, actually, because when the mother, grandmother told them that we were in Hopkins, which is a private hospital, they were all afraid because they thought they didn't have money and they were, they, they, they were just afraid. We, we were shocked to learn that they couldn't even come. So the grandmother could not be an option for us to discuss on matters payment. So we just proceeded to treat the patient without a deposit, without any uh, further uh, stress to the grandmother. And we were so delighted to, uh, to have the child uh, walk on his feet by day three, and we did not care about the bill. But just to have that child back to life was motivating even to part of our team, who were also afraid that this child could probably pass on. And uh, when the relatives, the mother and father, were told that the, uh, the doctor who is in charge of the facility is actually not charging us anything those relatives just cried before us and we gave them an ambulance to take them home that was the dire situation and it was one of the most motivating things that we've seen because we really didn't care whether we are losing revenue whether we are using medications whether we are requiring more specialized care but then the hope of having that child back to life and uh, having that positive impact to this mother and father and the kind words that they spoke to me and also to my team was just a reason enough <coughs> to make us uh, believe that indeed uh, God will always reward us in uh, his own ways. What was wrong with the child? Uh, so we had uh, severe malaria which had not been treated and you know in this region malaria is a is a this is a malaria endemic zone so it's very common in this area so if you do not treat malaria in the shortest time possible then uh, you can easily develop a severe or complications and uh, for children uh, convulsions is one of the presenting uh, symptom uh, signs and uh, and uh, later they can also have organ injuries like now uh, the lungs were also affected and therefore we had to give that special care because of that severe malaria oh. yeah oh, okay i saw that this hospital was open during COVID. yes this hospital was opened in uh, the year uh, 2020 yeah. uh, around october 
when uh, the wave of COVID was actually hitting and uh, spreading in all the counties. We did close. It was actually one of the periods that we can say we were baptized by fire because, you know, COVID was, was a menace and it's, it still remains to be one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because even in the top facilities, we lost so many patients. Uh, not even ICU could help people to, to come out alive. If that was severe and depending on so many other factors, uh, COVID could, uh, could, uh, could, could uh, consume the lives of so many Kenyans and uh, many people at large in the whole world. So at that particular period, we were just opening and uh, we thought that we should open uh, in a stepwise way, have our outpatient running. And of course, we always start small. Most people will start small. Uh, we didn't have the best of the facilities, but then when we started receiving patients, since the numbers of COVID patients were overwhelming in the government facilities, later now they could look for anything which looked like a hospital because people required oxygen, uh, people required to be in the ward, uh, those severe cases required to be in HDU, ICU. Therefore, we were also among the people who had to ensure that we get out of the comfort zone very quickly and assist these patients. And we are glad that we, out of over the 30 patients who visited our facility and were admitted, uh, we did not lose a single person from COVID complications. So the supportive care, because basically that was what was required, was given uh, very diligently by our team, which was very competent. And then now, on a demand basis, we could require more uh, uh, personnel to come and join so that there was demand okay. at that particular period as okay. we opened the facility. Okay. Yeah. How many employees do you have now? Uh, currently, we have uh, 74 permanent employees. And then, That's huge. of course, we have visiting consultants who are uh, 17. Yeah. So we are very happy that we are part of supporting the, the the economy from this side okay yeah you're from kisi yeah i, I what, come from kisi? kisi a place called nyacheki uh -huh. yeah. how did you end up in bungoma bungoma of all the places Akuna nafasi ya kujengo sultani kisi uh so uh, my father uh, my family lives in kitale oh yeah that's where uh in kitale and um after finishing my internship yeah. in uh, Machakos, I got a chance to work in Kenyatta National Hospital for a period of six months. And then I have a, a friend called Dr. Sama, Ben, who comes from this region. Uh, Dr. Sama is currently pursuing his uh, master's in surgery. Uh, he used to work in uh, Bungoma in a place called Bumula. And so he invited me for an opportunity for one of the facilities around here and when i came i thought i'll just come work for a few and go back to nairobi so that we can also pursue my masters uh, only to come once i go to that facility and then because of that passionate care to start and give back to the community which is always very uh, motivating and actually satisfying uh, I got this opportunity to have this place after two years of serving in uh, at that particular facility where Dr. Sam had introduced me, and that is how I have remained to be in Bungoma for now. Oh, for now? Yeah. Na panga kuenda wapi? Na rupi Nairobi? No, tutaenea kwa semu zingine za western because we, we are Kenyans and we can go anywhere. Okay. As long as we are still in Kenya. What do you like about Bungoma? Mpono umekuwa mapa sana. Uh, my services, basically as a doctor, yeah. and uh, this facility now, of course, it's impacting people so positively. And that is what is keeping us here, because we are doctors and we must have. That is our first role. And uh, reaching out to the community and assisting them in various ways. Okay. Even uh, outside medicine and uh, organizing uh, some help for uh, the less privileged. 
like uh, how we normally do and we've now put this to be a, an yearly thing reaching out to uh, children from the streets we began a campaign called that all the children matter and uh, we are actually in the process of uh, partnering with the people who are going to help us have the Hopkins Foundation which will look forward to ensure that at least from Bungoma we can end uh, street children from being there by looking forward to ensure that we uh, organize for their school, attend to their health, and once we do the schooling, I think that is the most important thing because after that they should be able to be uh, useful uh, ladies and gentlemen in this society. So that is one of the things that we are very keen and hopeful that we will get the right people who will support us to get to the Hopkins Foundation and give hope to the street children. Yep. If we do that in Bungoma, somebody else will do that elsewhere. And uh, I believe that is one of the good things that should happen in the society. Okay. Another thing is that we also support sports. One of the teams that you must have seen as you came, uh, which is now playing in Division 1 called Bungoma Stars, is also one of the teams that we support as Hopkins. And we are very happy to do that. So that kind of impact that we create just makes us uh, love our people from Western Mo. Uh, we've organized so many medical camps. One of the largest, actually, uh, we had 560 patients who visited an orthopedic camp. And we had patients from Transoya, patients from Busia, Vihiga, Kakamega, visiting for that medical camp. Okay. Yeah. Is your first name Hopkins? My first Unaka name Hopkins on point. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking. The hospital is called Hopkins. Me and then I come to Obina Hospital. <laughs> Why is the hospital called Hopkins? That's your son's name, Mama. Uh, family member. Now Hopkins. Uh, I did mention about uh, Doctor Carson Ben Carson. Yeah. That was actually one of the motivations to be also a doctor. Yeah. Uh, my dad is a, a philosopher, as we could call him, and he loves to motivate and inspire, and as we've known him. So he bought us these particular books uh, for me and my brothers. I think big and gifted hands. And I can vividly remember some of the details in those books, which I read more than, more than 25 years ago. No, more than 20 years ago. So some of those things made me discover later when I uh, was uh, growing to have the uh, increase of this passion to be a doctor about Ben Carson. And uh, in one of the facilities that he attended to was the St. John Hopkins Hospital in the U.S. So when uh, this opportunity came to have this facility, I couldn't think further than just have an iconic name uh, seems to have and give hope and affiliate it to uh, the St. John Hopkins in the U.S. because of Ben Carson. Uh, mm. Okay, okay. So, uh, 2020, mid, I'm early 2020? 2020 in November. November. Yeah. Up until now, uh, how many branches so far? So this is the we are uh, we are only running this branch. Okay. Uh, but soon we will probably be going to Kitale because of the demand from people. Okay. As I told you, our patients have been coming from Kitale, from Busia, okay. Kakamega, because they allege that there are no good facilities as what they have seen here, okay. and as to what our staff give as an extra service delivery to these patients. So we are motivated that if. Uh, God allows us to reach to these people and uh, get to have a very big facility in Kitale, uh, another one in Mount Elgon, uh, where people are also challenged in various ways, and then maybe one in Kakamega and another one in Busia. Yeah, so that will be our motivation to just ensure that they also have a test of Hopkins. What makes your hospital different from the others? See the hospital Shindano sio shindano. Okay, kuna shindano ya ngombe, then... <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
But then kuna ile shindano ya maziwa hiyo na kwangu chungu kuliko ile nyingine na kama majimaji. So <laughs> mnanielewa si ndio? Ama gani na kwangu chungu? Si ile maziwa? Eh, hao mejua. Kale kana kaka wa tuwa itigongwa ngwa unajua kwisha maneno. Alafu kuna kale ka clear. Hiyo kidogo unaika yeshamaliza. Ingine eh bado tuna iskuma tu. So what makes this different from these other hospitals? So the personnel in Hopkins Hospital have the self drive and the zeal just like the first uh, vision bearer who is me and our staff have been able to go overboard and actually learn the art of helping patients by not just doing their duties of administering drugs attending to them but ensuring that they are they are holistically okay so by talking very well to the clients giving them reassurance and uh, and and doing some of the small things that normally make it uh so humanly possible for anyone to feel at home like in this facility you'll have uh, my staff members came up with coffee a suggestion of coffee something that i'd never seen in another facility anyone who walks whether you are a patient or a visitor or a, a trespasser you'll just go to the reception <laughs> and you'll be given coffee okay <laughs> okay this is the only facility with coffee uh, very nice coffee and not just any coffee we have sweets for our babies we have a bouncing castle for our babies in hospital so that makes Hopkins just homely not okay. not just a hospital what what are your your rates like very payment? affordable very for affordable you? Yes. Hospital in car? consultation is just 400 shillings oh, yes serious yeah and sometimes we can even treat patients for free when we think that they are genuinely not in a position to provide for themselves oh wow yeah. kuna huyu security wangu anaitwa Mnes i think we need to treat him for free An- anafura sana eh huyu anakaa kwa na pesa no ana kitu ni ni gas for real unalipisha 400 consultation yes 400 shillings consultation Munge ni tafuta before mweke hiyo ni Oh okay yeah. that's that's uh, uh, I was around uh, earlier on and I I took around around the hospital so I want to play for you guys this video you check it out we went through the hospital I saw a trampoline I met your patients that are kai wagonjwa wanaka ni kwa hotel yeah chai kwa reserve you have like hospital kwa ni restaurant So check out this video. Karibu sana Hopkins. Asante. Bungoma. Thank you. The best hospital in Bungoma and yeah. Western at large. All right. Ah, yeah, yeah. So on a reception yetu hapa. Okay. We attend to all kind of clients. Uh, emergency kikuja zikuji reception. Okay. They rush directly to casualty. Okay. And over there this is the only facility I've never seen any facility in Napena coffee by the way. Okay, <laughs> you know in western you have to ensure people are well taken care. Yeah. <laughs> is this is a restaurant. <laughs> you can see that's oh, nice, some good nice. coffee. Nice. Yeah, we've uh, participated in a number of uh, CSR oh. and once uh, best Sembera hospital award. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Java Fellowship Cup Mingi present ah mm-hmm. nice yeah outstanding healthcare award yes okay ah oh, you sponsor a lot of football yes we sponsor a lot of football that's why you've seen that team outside there okay this is a wonderful reception team uh led by Emmanuel and Clinton Hamujamo mabibi na mabwana anayepita mbelenyu sasa ni mgonjwa ana ugonjwa ya poverty mm. amepimwa akasema shida ni pesa <laughs> yeah. nice to meet you guys uh, yeah. uh, yes nimeshike ni pole nikushike upone ndio yeah. hiyo <laughs> receive eh <laughs> <laughs> hey, huyu mumdunge shindano tano eh <laughs> hey, tano tu alafu atatembea akienda eh huyu ni mrefu sana tatu itatosha kwanza ile ya ngombe <laughs> Obina tunataka upimwe pressure haya tupime tuone pressure yake kama tutabaki na wewe hapa daya sawa 
Hii naitwa triage. Sasa tunaleta finish for privacy. Yeah. Yeah. Aya, tumble lead. Tupeleke wao. All right. Hapo inaitwa triage. Okay. Kilo tutapima, pressure tupime, height. Yeah. Tuanze na kilo. Kilo. Okay. Ndio hiyo. Iko ngapi? 87. 87. Okay. Iko 90. Aya. Yeah. How are you? Iko fit? Iko fit. Bonnie pressure. Eh, sasa na pressure mingi. Sasa hii pressure huko show iko juu. Nataka nataka kuku. Mm. Pressure huko juu nikipata kuku pressure itapungua. <laughs> Okay, that's okay. Hello, oh, this is my wife. Oh, uh, the hi, how are you? Yeah, oh, she's also a doctor. Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Right. So we have consultations because there are patients all over. Dental unit, basically this is the outpatient unit. We will okay. not go there. Room 1, room 3, room 2, optical na dental. Okay. Tutapita through casualty and then to get a lift as we go up to see the other facilities. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, so emergencies zikija yeah. basically as if i kusimama anywhere they yeah. rush directly to casualty uh, this is the way to the casualty area and we have a team of special doctors who will attend to them immediately these are uh, some of our loyal clients how are you you are good mekuja mch yeah okay in this facility ikona beds monitor oxygen in case of any serious injury at least to stabilize first minor theater up for minor procedures okay. psychology unit pale counseling maybe you may need to see it because that's one of the things which are of uh, a great concern nowadays yes this is a section of our doctors wanashikilia hapa vizuri kabisa my fans wako hapo pia you can just say hi to them hello sasin Eh. Kofiti eh. unangoja shindano. Amasema <laughs> <laughs> mama. Eh. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, psychology unit. No, okay. Where you come with Soviet express ah. your all. Unaeleza psychologist. Hello. How are you? Eh, kila kitu and then, psychologist. Uh, no, this is a, a public relations officer, oh. psychologist ako away in Kakamega for some sensitization. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Eh. Oh nice. You know yeah. I'm I'm very passionate about mental health. Yes. Especially for the men. Yeah. And I did the first men's mental health awareness walk in Nairobi a month ago. Okay. Uh because boy child tunaumia na watu wanakuwa. So mimi mko mmoja nikasema acha nianze kujiongea. So this one uh, is beautiful. I think every hospital should have a unit such, at such least. a space. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so just people come and they just chill and they just oh. talk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That is it. So we will get Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Soft. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yes. From home abe. Yeah, okay. Stokeshe mama mami mami kaka kaka. Ah yeah. So the only place with a spacious lift. Oh wow, by the way this one is spacious. Very spacious. It has to be a sea water. Basically in Isabeba 26 people. This is the theater region main theater apa. Opened uh, two years ago by the deputy governor. Uh then we have our ICU which was opened by His Excellency the Governor. Okay. We are serving patients from all the counties in uh Western Region. Okay. This was opened in uh, February this year by the Governor Rusaka. Okay. Was here to launch it. 
and then maternity area and uh, it's a special region for Hopkins to actually take care of the children. Okay. They only place with a trampoline around. Ah, nice. So when they are sick, yeah. they can just jump here. Kujo <laughs> uruke. Ah. So in our idea on a recover map, uh-huh. Wako na VTA hapo na meza ya kufanya assignment, yeah. kala, cartoons all over. Okay. So we've taken care of the babies okay. very well. Ni watoto tu wako allowed kurugaruka? Usijaribu. <laughs> <laughs> Just asking, you know. It's good to ask mommy. Come, yeah. come, 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 mom. Yeah. Uja. Hey, umemach socks na sweater. Hey. Inafanya kononoscopy. Nafanya is of uh, OGDP ya. Yeah. Yeah. Eh. Specialist mingine pia na kapa. Okay. Yeah. Then finally, as we go to the presidential end suits, which we've also launched today, for dignitaries or any other person who wishes to get executive care. Hapa ni place ya staff members to have birthday parties, morning devotion on Friday and day on Monday. Okay. So we pray before you start every Monday and every Friday, at least as a hospital. Okay. Then VIP lounge. Where relatives to the patients admitted in the presidential ward will come to Lia Kidogo before they uh, are allowed in. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll have a look at one of the presidential. These are pavilion wards. And then the presidential in Okay. Uh, there are five units launched today. Oh. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, still in the process of equipping them. Okay. Yeah. And then someone can just sleep here and yes. chill with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when you have some relatives visiting, they can sit there. Mm. So it's make ceiling better. So it has a bathroom? Yeah, self-contained. You can mm. check. Okay. Nice. Even yeah. a micro. Yeah. Then the muja. Your closet, your clothes. So sit kunja kunja ngo kireka chini ya kitanda. Yeah. So you just hang them. Your shoes, your bags, everything. Oh, nice. Your TV, FIFA ina kunja. Ah, I'm not seeing the thing. Oh, nice. Kama una chesa FIFA pi itakuwa. Okay. Yeah. Kama mani na chesa ma kichapa. Ah, azima yokitu. Tuko kwa sukutali, mutu aneza lazo wapa kimichezo. Aneza lazo wapa kama jokes. This is another presidential suit. Ah, nice. Yeah. You can just feel the seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like this type of seats, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I've noticed them all over the hospital. Yeah. This is your favorite? Uh, demand from patients. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Hopkins Crescent. Mm. Why Hopkins? Hopkins is iconic from uh, the journal. The Hopkins hospitals in the US. Uh, Dr. Carson is a mentor to many of us. Ben Carson. Ben yes. Carson. Oh. Yes. And he operated the conjoined twins. And of course, the how he grew up. I'm sure you read Think Big. I read it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, don't, I read a long time, even Gifted Hands. Okay. I read it a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that is why we borrowed that name. But then this is Hopkins Crescent Hospitals, Bungoma. Okay. Yeah, but we are soon taking it to other counties in Western. 
All righty. Okay. Well in, well in, well in. It's okay. It's fine. See, it just looks the same. Yeah, yeah they all okay. look the same. All yeah. the other ones are occupied. Okay. Yeah. All righty. You've seen it. Yeah. So that is how Hopkins uh, in Bungoma looks like. And then when I also came in, I met a couple of footballers up in here. What's, what's that about? Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, we have Bungoma Stars, uh, which is a, a football club that is playing in Division 1. Okay. And as you know, these young boys who are now growing into men, have no, they, they, are, they are very talented. And uh, unfortunately, they do not have people who can support them. The government itself cannot in alone cannot just play uh, that role sometimes we have to come in as uh, interested stakeholders and assist where we can and uh, you know even as we look forward to having uh, these big clubs like manchester united personally i'm a fan of manchester united me too yeah preach brother preach so when i want to wait for every weekend to come so that i can watch manchester united get walloped uh, uh -huh. unfortunately uh -huh. now, we so, were going on nice so 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 i believe that if these young boys get an exposure uh they can also get to reach to that level okay. so they can only get to that level if somebody believes in them gives them some boots to play with gives them some uniform gives them the platform so that they can go through all that ladder of growth in soccer and maybe one day they can also get signed in one of the big clubs so mm. we support bungo masters yeah and that is one of the things that we are proud of nice yeah wana tandi kwama wana uh, it is the pride of Bungoma, so soon ah. they should be able to get to the national super league mm -hmm. and maybe in the kenya premier league oh yeah Go bungo mustos. Yeah. Usifanye wenye Manchester tumefanya huko. I saw this one as well. Hopkins ni yetu. Yeah. Wellness run. Hopkins wellness run. The ini the. Yeah, the Hopkins uh -huh. wellness run. 10th November 2024. Yeah. Unakimbia mkienda wapi? So why are we running? Uh this is one of the events that we organizing this coming november okay and uh it's called the wellness run wellness basically means to be health yeah. and uh to ensure that uh the preventable diseases that mm -hmm. we have they have risk factors uh, such as obesity sedentary lifestyle poor eating habits among others okay. but at least by being active we will be reducing the chances of having someone unwell okay. so the chronic conditions like hypertension diabetes are going to uh, definitely be reduced so on 10th of november we are organizing for that marathon which will be uh, flagged off from hopkins hospital and uh, we are in talks with the police so that we can have that leeway to have one of the highways one of the sides of the dual carriage yeah. to be free for marathon pregnant mothers will okay for a very short distance we don't want them to run and get into labor uh yeah. for the very many people who are already interested all the way from uh kitale actually there is somebody called mkenya in mkenya mkenya one million is also coming with his crew to run during that marathon so that will be a seven kilometer from hopkins to kandui to town okay and to back to, to back to hopkins okay whoever wins of course there will be giveaways but the main goal for this campaign is to ensure that we have that wellness awareness okay uh, that is supposed to reduce the prevalence of some <laughs> chronic conditions like the ones i've mentioned okay yeah time uh, it will start it will be on a sunday and it will start at 7 30 in the morning. the morning yes okay yeah on 9th november i'll be in kisumu inshallah god willing 
sasa si nikuja nikimbia masikali kukimbia ya yeah, utakimbia na ukishinda utapata zawadi pesa ngapi sio pesa lakini ah. we want to we will uh, decide as a committee there is a committee who should be able to decide on the gift that they want to to give to a free hospital treatment for one year <laughs> that is also considerable mm yeah. kwa mgonjwa watu anatibiwa tu mimi ndakuwa nakuja tu kuongezwa maji on the weekends for fun ko tu tis manilishinda marathon <laughs> oh wow okay so this is nice this is a nice initiative i like it and uh, i wish you all the best on this one as well yeah. and the other ones that are coming on the growth of the of the other branches as well what next what comes next mm, so of course uh, definitely that is it and uh, getting to get our footing in all the parts of the country will be the goal uh, in healthcare basically okay. to ensure that our people remain healthy uh, we are champions of primary healthcare okay secondary in case we have patients okay uh, What's secondary healthcare primary healthcare is preventive medicine so when you give information to people like what you are now doing going to run in healthcare yes this is healthcare Oh. running is healthcare. Uh, medical talks, advisories are healthcare. Okay. We also focus on mental healthcare by the way. And yeah, I saw a unit. It's something that I've That's seen nice. you passionate about yes. as well. Yes. And mental awareness, El- mental health awareness mental is one of awareness. the yeah. rising cases that we, we've seen currently. So we take all those very seriously and uh, that is the kind of impact that we want to create to the society to have everything under one roof and we are soon achieving that and then now we can also get to other parts of the country okay what's the biggest challenge of owning a hospital mtu anaweza fungua mimi naweza fungua hospitali naweza jaribu it's not easy uh, hey. yeah, definitely like a room uh, finances ni zile vitu zenye ulikuwa unaandika kwa social studies those challenges capital Uh, yeah. competition, competition lack of people falling sick sasa <laughs> we watu wa kikuo gonyo unabambika uh, people will always be unwell wa kwa gonyo unabambika not really yeah. we are just here in case they fall unwell yeah. we are here to give them hope to give them life okay yeah so challenges of healthcare are uh, sometimes even as healthcare providers i can say The biggest challenge that we can have is when you take care of a patient so passionately but then unfortunately you lose them. We also get emotional uh, attachment to these patients. Uh especially psychiatric patients, you know, for avoidable for unavoidable reasons, they you lose some, okay? So even if you gave the best care, you went to ICU, you intubated these patients, there are cases where you cannot there is nothing much you can do yeah so in case you have uh, stayed with this patient for maybe a month you know you've been attending to them daily they become part of you our staff break down sometimes when they lose a certain patient so they also need to get counseled so those are some of the things that we've seen around of course and in healthcare it's also not easy to ensure that you have everything in a place so financial challenges can also be something that is difficult for most of us because we are still a young facility and we are still growing okay yeah um last question your staff how friendly are they they are very friendly as much as i know manas sana sana wale wako kwa laboratory ah wale wako itana huyo patient wa gonorrhea unaitwa wale wale wenye wako kwa laboratory they also have deduced their own ways of ensuring that their patients are actually comfortable even when pricking them uh, this is the one of the facilities yenye ukipita uweze sikia watu wakipiga piga nduru even 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 when they are being uh, cannulated so they have a butterfly cannula which is very Uh, small in size friendly and uh, they have sweets all of us you've seen so getting to make them friends is 
an easy thing for for for, for us and right. um, we've ensured that we get that intense training from our human resource and uh, ensuring that you not only attend to them as patients but okay. then uh, on a very friendly basis one thing that i'll commend you on is uh, the hygiene I've yes. been around Sijaskia Haruvi Hospital. I don't like hospitals. Like, unaingia ngati Haruvi even kutuli. Ah yeah, you just start smelling malaria. Yeah. Unaingia even na nusu tuni umonia. Like since I got in until now, nika tu koko hotel. Yada mno na vaje tu mechili. Imagine tu kona ni hospital. Yes, we are coming live from Hopkins uh, Hospital in uh, Bungoma, and it looks it's very chilled. Unaskia kuna patients wa melala. Ugato wezi juu ako around. Told you looks like a hotel. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So your teliako leo imelaunchiwa a new wing with yes. uh, the day we are shooting this there's a wing that was being launched by the DG Yeah the deputy governor was here to launch the doctors plaza okay and the presidential ensuits okay yes okay yeah so what are the doctors plaza doing Doctors plaza is a a, a form of outpatient where uh, our patients who need uh, consultants mm. or specialists are going to be attended from okay so as you come through to third floor via the lift you're able to get to the doctor's you plaza to put the lift there okay <laughs> via the lift okay you are able to get to the doctor's plaza okay and uh we have various specialists as you saw among these is a cardiologist that's a specialist for the heart we have a neurosurgeon for the brain, spinal cord and trauma. Uh, we have a dermatologist, Dr. Wangozi. We have two physicians, two pediatricians, Dr. Wawatoto. Okay. We have a pediatric surgeon, three gynecologists. Uh, we have orthopedic surgeons, two of them, Dr. Wamifupa. We have a plastic surgeon. We have a resident radiologist who deals with uh, x-ray, CT scan, ultrasound, echo, ECG, EEGs, all those. We have a gastroenterologist and an, uh, who does endoscopy procedures, one of the machines that you saw. Uh, yeah, um, among others, we have a general surgeon. So we have all the specialists on board. So basically when a patient comes, they are first seen by a general doctor. We have several medical officers here. So if the medical officer thinks that this patient probably needs a plastic surgeon, needs a neurosurgeon, then they will book and they'll come to the uh, specific doctors and then they'll be attended from up here. Okay. Yeah. All right. I want to thank you very much for hosting us. And I hope that uh, the people who are going to watch this are going to have a very different perception or understanding of Hopkins, a hospital, group of hospitals. Then also, they can come through. Yeah. yeah. But Dr. Renu, you want to patients? Kuendea wapi. Si kama una request kama uba ya ni. Yeah, we have uh, <laughs> online consultation nowadays. So, uh -huh. yeah, we do all those. Home, okay. Home-based. Uh, consultation doctors okay. we can go because they are geriatric patients those who do not some patients do not wish to come to the hospital yeah. because of the stereotypes that they probably had in the recent past so we go to that extent of going home we send our special team to go and collect samples and then test them in the lab and uh, see what medications alongside what the clinical acumen will suggest so that they are able to be served better yeah all righty mm. so thank you very much for doing what you're doing for the uh, bungoma society community mm. and town and also the vision that you've been bearing you know most of the time when the vision bearer is not serious <laughs> the, the vision dies over there mm. so you, you you took it and you ran with it and now look at this now i'm sure i kwanza na na lift yeah, motivation was bigger. You just started this hospital with one panado. Mm. Yeah, but now it is here. So keep doing that. And uh, as Obina TV Network, we'll keep supporting when needed. Uh, just call me. We'll see how we help. Uh, I like individuals who are doing positive things for the society. That's, that's why I'm here.
basically, because I had the stories and I was like, I have to pass by. And I'm going to other places as well, getting inspirational, motivational conversations from other people who are doing amazing things and giving them their flowers. So thank you. Okay. You have a place in heaven. Amen. You too. <laughs> yes, you're a good man. You'll go to heaven. Okay. Thank you for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. Namuleta wagonjoe nyuhapa. Good night.